Hello fellow travelers, welcome to my channel. I hope that you all are do doing okay and having an amazing day. If you are new to the channel, please give this video a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button, which is free, and then hit the notification bell so you won't miss when I post a video. If you're on social media, please give us a follow or a like on our Facebook page at Julia's Truckin' Cafe. That's spelled at Julia's, J-U-L-I-A-S, capital T-R-C-K-N, capital C-A-F-E. In this story, A1 second 30-day suspension was reversed within hours. So, you remember the previous show I was talking about this A1's towing service, wrecker service, outside of um, Memphis that uh, was getting numerous complaints about overbilling drivers and everything on the last episode. Well, they were supposed to investigate them and issue a, a second 30-day suspension. Well, Within hours of issuing that 30-day suspension, it was reversed without explanation, putting the company back in business despite everybody's complaining. So it's like you can't even complain uh, and report somebody taking you to the cleaners because if they have the right people in the right places, it isn't going to do a damn bit of good. Sounds like a government, doesn't it? Anyway. Memphis officials voted un uh, unanimously, unanimously, I should say, to suspend A1's towing permit for 30 days back in the beginning of March, citing ordinance violations in regards to towing and storage fees. This action should have marked the second suspension for the company in the last six months. However, a judge reversed the 30-day suspension against exclusive auto by granting a stay in Shelby County Chancery Court. Up next, this truck driver brake checks a car for a good cause. Now this is a video on this story. I will provide the link in the description because YouTube gets really pissy if I show any type of videos over like a couple of seconds. It's just best for me to share the link in the de description of this video. Trucker brake checks car for a very good reason. It was captured by another motorist. A bobtail rig pulls up next to a moving sedan and keeps pace with it before finally pulling in front of it. The rig then brake checks the car, appearing as if he's trying to cause an accident. The two vehicles come to the stop in the middle of the roadway. The motorist then storms out of his car and aggressively approaches the trucker as he steps out of his rig, all while his female passenger is watching this. The motorist grabs the truck driver by his jacket. The driver quickly calms the man down, takes him by the hand, and shows Big Tech's trailers to shutter their Idaho plant permanently. A popular trailer manufacturer, Big Tex Trailers, will close down their Idaho plant, according to documents that were filed with Idaho. And according to a warn notice filed with the Department of Labor, as of March 8, Texas headquartered manufacturer, Big Tex Trailers, will semi-truck plunged into the water as the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapses. A semi-truck was thrown into the water during the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse, as we all heard about this major horrific bridge collapsing last week, Monday, or actually March 26th, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit off on the time. My days are running together. My bad. This occurred just before 1.30, as we all know, on March 26th in the morning when a container ship from Singapore struck the bridge over the Pata... Apsco, Pat Apsco River, that large channel, and this is on 895 on the south side of Baltimore. The four lane bridge is one and a half miles long and connects the Baltimore Harbor. 
Construction workers, as we all know, were working with the State Transportation Agency on repairs on the bridge at the time of the collapse. At, that, at the time of writing this article, they didn't know exactly how many people were on the bridge when it collapsed. According to local news, two people were rescued around 8.15 in the morning. One of the people were even unhurt, and the other is in very serious condition. Multiple vehicles are believed to have been have plunged into the water and a trucker is beaten with a hammer by a pair of men as he sits in the breakdown lane on a major interstate. A trucker was beaten with a hammer by two men in an apparent road rage incident on 495 in Massachusetts on Monday, March 25th, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on I-495. According to the local news, a truck driver pulled over into the breakdown lane during an apparent road rage incident. Two men in a Volkswagen GTI hatchback then pulled over and got out of the car before attacking the driver with a hammer. Then they jumped in their car and drove away. Chicken shits. The 28-year-old truck driver... The next story is a sad one if you are a horse lover like me. Three thoroughbred horses were killed when the horse trailer, semi-horse, you know, carriage trailer that were uh, they were in collided with a bridge embankment in Kentucky. Multiple agencies in Kentucky responded to a major collision involving a semi-truck hauling thoroughbred horses. Now you can understand that these horses were are very very valuable as I'm under uh, trying to say sorry um, one just not even a good bloodline one thoroughbred horse will go from ten thousand dollars on up there were seven horses in this horse trailer it this crash occurred before 5 a.m. in Kentucky They were off the Bluegrass Parkway at exit 25. There were, like I said, seven thoroughbred horses were in there. Three of them perished. He crossed the median into the westbound lanes and ran up the embankment and hit the overpass. As you could see here, the cab was obliterated. If you don't travel Baltimore much, here's the latest detour and commercial travel info. Maryland Transportation Authority shared the detour and commercial vehicle travel info for drivers attempting to navigate around the catastrophic bridge collapse. Avoid the southeast corridor of 695, in other words, the 895 loop. Uh, the outer loop was closed at Maryland 10 exit 2, and the inner loop closed at Maryland 157. Peninsula Expressway exit 43. Harbor crossing alternate routes will be I-95 or the, excuse me, I-895 tunnels. Vehicles transporting hazardous pro materials prohibited in the tunnels should you... This next story may take you by surprise. A trucker calls for help in wrangling an eagle that's running loose in his cab. So... Let me tell you the story first before you're going, what? Because I was wondering when I saw the picture, how in the world did I think get in his truck? So a truck driver called for help after he rescued an injured eagle. Well, he just realized his bird was laying in the roadway, which led to running loose in his cab in South Dakota. A truck driver rescued the golden eagle earlier in the day after seeing it get hit by another semi. He stopped and wrapped the stunned eagle in a blanket before bringing it into his cab and continuing along his way to, you know, where he was going. Later that day, the driver made a stop at Belfouche, South Dakota, and left his truck, 
When the driver returned, he found the eagle had got out of the blanket and was perched on his dashboard, as you see here in the picture. And these are the two idiots that had to start a road rage incident. And you can see the guy on the left is a pretty big old boy and pick on a 23-year-old truck driver. Of course, they're going to say that the hammer attack that the truck driver started it. So they're not going to, you know, uh, admit to anything. These two di dipshits face charges of a hammer attack against a truck driver say that the truck driver initiated it. According to the local news, Javier Gutierrez Vargas and Martin, the two suspects in the incident, saw the truck driver weaving in and out of traffic before he waved at them to pull over. The brother-in-laws did pull over, and that's when the altercation started. Marin, this is their story now. Marin said the driver pushed Vargas first, which led to the hammer attack. However, Marin claims that he never managed to strike the driver with the hammer, but the trucker was able to turn it around on him. Well, good for the driver. The trucker hit him first, and it was like to defend myself. And in this story, I-95 is going to be a real disaster thanks to the collapsed bridge, you think? As we, like I said, as we know, Francis Cock Key Bridge collapsed due to a cargo ship. And you see how, and you know, if you're watching the video, you see how tall each one of them rose. And each one of those little boxes is a 42 to 48 foot container that you see rolling down the highway. These are the ships that bring it to the country for import exports. So each row, it could be, you know, six, seven high of these containers. 13, six by 48 foot long. 42 to 48, 50, you know, 53 foot long. You never know. And France, in a little bit of history, Francis Scott Key Bridge was named after the founder who sewed the American flag. And it was a 60-year-old bridge. So all ship traffic was suspended at the port of Baltimore indefinitely. For so now let's talk about something else besides the Francis Scott Key Bridge. I know you're all getting tired of that. How about a driver smuggling migrants for a friend since his girlfriend was out of the truck? Now, here you go. Here's a good excuse. A truck driver finally smuggled migrants for a, quote, air quote, friend now that his girlfriend was no longer traveling with him. This is what he told Border Patrol agents. This happened, uh, this incident began when a truck driver, John Wayne, P-E-A-Y-P-A? I don't want to pronounce that wrong. Pulled up on I-35 border checkpoint in Texas. According to... It's right around Laredo. The agents became suspicious when they asked the driver if anybody else was inside the sleeper with him. And then he hesitated. Then they noticed the driver watching the canine agent very closely. Right up until the dog alerted the possible contraband inside of the bunk. An agent then requested him to open the side door from inside of the sleeper. An agent soon discovered four migrants were hiding inside. He was, the driver was arrested and he told agents after they started interviewing him that air quotes a friend had met him at a convenience store and asked him if he could give some friends of his a ride to San Antonio prior to getting caught. The driver told agents that this was the second time this friend had asked him for the favor, but that he had declined the first time because his girlfriend had been riding with him on the truck. The driver later admitted that he had texted the friend back in March after his girlfriend had gone back home to say that he was willing to do the favor for two grand. The driver was then charged with transport, attempted transport, and conspiracy to transport migrants. You just don't do it. It doesn't pay. You get, you get three. And here we have another brilliant soul. A truck driver is arrested after an impaired driving spree. In other words, he was drunk. 
Canadian police arrested a truck driver following an impaired driving speed during spree during which he allegedly struck two vehicles, several trees, ran a red light, and was speeding. Uh, around 6.30 at night, at the end of March, police responded to multiple calls about a red Kenworth tra semi flatbed driving dangerously in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Caller said that the driver was swerving erratically and driving at speeds of about 93 miles an hour. Edmonton Police Department described as impaired driving spree, quote, the truck subsequently entered the Walker area, struck a parked GMC Sierra, knocked over a tree, ran a red light, and then he continued southbound along 50th Street, traveling about 70, 100. And one more time, one more story about the Key Bridge. This is, if you're watching the YouTube, this is a little bit better look at how much damage that did. That Baltimore officials modify the truck routes. I'm trying to keep everybody posted. They changed the city's official truck route to try to accommodate for the increased traffic following this catastrophe. Officials say that the bridge collapse is expected to bring higher than usual traffic volumes to the city streets and to designated truck routes in particular in order to minimize disruption. And in this story, a wannabe trucker car hauler hauls an insane stack of vehicles. A driver films a flatbed work truck stacked with a dump truck with a pickup truck in the dump truck bed. Inside the pickup truck bed is a lawn, lawn tractor. Hooked up behind the flatbed is another. Truckers are to pay up to $36 when New York congestion toll goes into effect in June. They're at it again. New York City officials have approved a first-of-its-kind congestion toll for truckers and passenger vehicle drivers. The MTA, Metropolitan Transportation Authority, approved a plan to begin tolling vehicles entering the congestion relief zone in Manhattan below 60th Street starting June of this year. This is the first-ever congestion toll imposed on drivers by a U.S. city which I stay out of New York City. According to the, this association, heavy duty trucks and some buses will be charged a toll of $24 or $36 during the day to enter the congestion relief zone, depending on their size and function, and six to $9 at night. Passenger vehicles and smaller commercial vehicles. And here we have another dumb bunny. A box truck driver hits a bridge on a parkway and they cite him for every si low uh, height sign or low clearance sign that he ignored. New York State Police issued more than two dozen citations following this bridge strike. It took place back end of March on Onondaga Lake Parkway near Syracuse about one o'clock in the afternoon. The box truck struck the bridge along the Onondaga Lake Parkway and became stuck. New York State Police said no one was hurt and the box truck was removed after about an hour. According to the local news, the driver of the box truck was cited 25 times for failing to observe traffic signs indicating a low bridge. One citation for each sign that the driver allegedly passed and ignored. There are so many bridge strikes on the Onondaga Lake Parkway that the New York State Department... Up next, a driver is pinned after removing wheel chocks. A truck driver was pinned by a rolling truck after removing the wheel chocks while at a loading dock. Uh, weren't you supposed to put the parking brake on first? The accident happened end of March in Elsip, Illinois. According to the local news, 58-year-old John D. Horn removed the wheel chocks from the wheels of a semi parked at a loading dock. The truck then rolled, pitting all. Julia's Trucking Cafe is a trademark brand. Julia's Trucking Cafe podcast is ranked in the top 10% of 3 million active podcasts worldwide. 
Any and all images used on this show are shared under the Fair Use Act, which you can see here. No copyright infringement is intended, expected, or will be litigated. We thank you for joining us this week. We hope that you have a safe and prosperous week. Please keep the shiny side up. Until next time.